An extreme winter storm is becoming increasingly likely at this point where both of the main computer models are now forecasting a major winter storm to impact the Midwest and Northeast by next week where millions of Americans could get involved with over a foot of snow from this storm system. If we were to continue to move forward with what the European model is stating at this time, of course, in the Midwest, you need to pay close attention to the more short-term snowstorms that is that are expected to impact you guys within the next 48 to, to 72 hours where of course we do have this first slow pressure system that's going to bring some snowfall into northern minnesota and the dakota so make sure to watch out for that and then we have another snow um, snowstorm that's expected to move in to the illinois wisconsin area bringing right around three to six inches of snow however the more extreme snowstorm could happen by next week where if i were to continue to move forward with the european model as we approach the weekend we do see that it's going to be relatively quiet this weekend when it comes to wet um, weather and we do see that the temperatures will be much colder than average for much of the eastern half of the united states but that's expected to quickly change as we approach the midweek of next week where we do see that there's going to be an enhanced area of convection developing right around the ohio valley that's going to bring some rain showers and potentially some snow in the northeast and moving forward we're going to have several clipper systems that are expected to move through the United States as a result of a pronounced jet stream dip now that we're seeing, which has definitely been, uh, which is definitely unusual for what we've been seeing so far this winter, where we just seen a very dominant ridge that's parked right over the eastern half of the united states that's been that's been bringing a strong southerly wind to prevent a lot of clipper systems from moving southward and bringing snow to much of the northern and especially the eastern united states but that's like the, the but that trend is expected to change next week where we do see a pretty pronounced jet stream dip so we could see a multitude of clipper systems move through and as a result of an enhanced risk of winter weather moving forward we do have this first clipper system that could bring some snow in the mid-atlantic states where we do see washington dc baltimore virginia pennsylvania do get involved with some snowfall from this uh, trough that's expected to develop just off the carolinas however it isn't necessarily going to be powerful enough and it seems like the low pressures will be just at east enough for the heaviest of the snow or at least the, the heaviest of the precipitation to miss out on the east coast cities but it becomes a different story when we take a look at this low pressure system that's gonna pretty much lurk right behind this initial low pressure system and there's gonna be plenty of cold air behind this chop that's going to create just enough of an unstable environment for an extremely large area of snow to develop just look at how large the area of snow is this extends from ohio as far west as montana and it's not just light snow it's very heavy snow the area of snow is very consolidated we also do see freezing rain associated with this chop which which is a common trend when we see a low pressure system that's moving eastward again against a ridge that's bringing a strong northeasterly wind that's bringing that cool air um, further southwestward once when we see a strong northeasterly flow as well as a strong southwesterly flow converge right around uh, an area of precipitation that typically does definitely enhance the risk of freeze of a freezing rain threat so i wouldn't rule out the chance of freezing rain associated from the storm system as well if the european model scenario were to come for fruition but we do see a very large area of heavy snowfall and this ex and this impacts a lot of the big cities in the midwest this impacts chicago this impacts minneapolis this impacts milwaukee des moines gets involved indianapolis detroit and even the northeast cities where we do see new york city philadelphia and even portions of maryland get involved with very heavy snowfall from this storm system as we do see that the temperatures are expected to be cold enough for once in the northeast the, uh, this winter where the, the the european model is expecting that there's going to be a ridge that's going to be parked just to the west enough to bring more of a northerly flow rather than a southerly flow to the northeast to bring that arctic air for southward in northeast for this storm to bring more of a snow vent 
for much of the northeast including the coastal regions of the northeast which is definitely different from what we've been seeing this winter because typically this ridge would be located a little bit further eastward where we'd see more of a southerly flow which would prevent the northeast from experiencing much of a snow event but in this scenario the european model is expecting the ridge build a lot further um uh, westward to the point where the northeast will get involved with more of a northerly flow rather than a southerly flow which is huge w uh, when it comes to bringing that cold air um that's uh, that brings the temperature low enough to support precipitation in the form of snowfall so of course this would be a significant snowstorm millions of americans in this scenario would experience over a foot of snow and this will be a crippling crippling blizzard that would impact so many people throughout the northern united states but of course i'm going fairly far out this is going around nine days out so there's still a lot of time to iron out the forecast however the gfs model is showing a fairly similar forecast for a scenario that's nine days out so it does raise certainty that we at least could see a major winter storm impact the midwest or at least somewhere in the united states by next week it really all depends like i said where exactly while the gfs model is showing a similar scenario there's still pretty big differences when it comes to the forecast the european model is expecting a little bit more so from the northeast than what the gfs model is showing but there's going to be several key factors that's really going to determine who will get the heaviest snowfall for one thing is the position of this ridge because the European model expects the ridge be to build a little bit further westward and that would allow a little bit more cold air to move into the northeast for more of a snow event to occur in the European model scenario and also the European model isn't expecting this ridge to necessarily be as strong as GFS model so we're still seeing the, the cool air linger around a little bit more in the northern United States for much of the for many areas of the midwest and northeast to experience snowfall rather than the more n northern areas rather than snow stay exclusive to the more interior and the more northern areas of the united states so we're gonna really need to determine how strong this ridge will be just to the east of this low pressure system to really determine who will get the heaviest snowfall from this trough and at this point the european model expects that this ridge will be just weak enough and just so west enough to bring snowfall for much pretty much most of the northern united states and we could potentially see that ice as that's certainly not out of the realm of possibilities either because we're seeing a strong northeasterly flow bring that cold air towards the southwest and we're seeing a strong southwesterly flow from the slow pressure system as well and that creates a recipe that often creates a recipe for a pretty bad freezing rain threat so we need to pay close attention to that possibility as well so for the snow lovers in the northeast who've been hoping for that one major snowstorm in the northeast this has a potential of 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 being that snowstorm but there's still a lot of time to iron out the forecast and now let's take a look at the gfs model scenario because the gfs model still isn't entirely in good agreement with the european model at this time and also what will determine who will get the heaviest snowfall and how much snowfall you will receive is how much instability there will be associated with this low pressure system that will be key how much cold air there will be how much of a southerly flow will be just to the east of it that those were all, will all play a fact factor in determining how strong this storm will be and who will receive the heaviest snowfall I'll keep you guys updated over the next several days now let's take a look at the gfs model so for the short term future the gfs model is in pretty high agreement with the european model expect snow in many of the same areas that the european model is expecting snowfall at least for these next two short more short term snowstorms moving through the midwest so in minnesota watch out for snowfall for your wednesday morning commute and into kansas and i will make sure to watch out for snowfall as well going into thursday as well and even as chicago you might get a little bit involved with some snowfall as you approach the late thursday 
Thursday time frame, so watch out for that. But moving forward to this uh, potential extreme snowstorm that's expected to build by next week. So if you were to continue to move forward, we see the same clipper system that the European model is forecasting develop in the GFS model scenario as well. The GFS model is taking a storm that's a little bit stronger. It expects the instability to be there a little bit more than the European model. But for the most part, it's still a similar forecast, primarily a rain event for the northeast but moving forward we do see that uh, this the same clipper system that the european model wants to bring to the northeast the gfs model is expecting this clipper system to produce a little bit more snowfall and the reason why is because the gfs model doesn't expect a jet stream that that's as significant and what that results in is that this low pressure system that's going to be located right in between colorado and kansas won't move as far south because the jet stream dip isn't as pronounced and we aren't seeing a strong enough northerly flow to push that low pressure system for southward so this low pressure system will have a better shot at interacting with this clipper system just to north of it for a more significant snowstorm threat to develop at least with this clipper system based on what the gfs model is stating because we see uh we see a higher level of convergence between this warmer warm core low pressure system and this arctic uh, trough that's expected to move southward as well so we do see heavier snowfall from this clipper system in this scenario but it's still i wouldn't say it's necessarily a major snowstorm but just something to watch out for um before the big event comes through the northeast and then moving forward what's interesting is that the gfs model expects this storm system to develop more in a segmented in a more segmented um way where we see uh we see the first low pressure system develop right around the mississippi river valley as the gfs model doesn't expect as much ridging to build as far westward so we see a little bit more troughing or at least a higher possibility of convection to occur a little bit further eastward a little bit earlier so we see a low pressure system develop as a result of that as the, the gfs model expects just enough instability for this first low pressure system to develop and we do see heavy snowfall from this first low pressure system and we do see that for the second low pressure system it's still bringing a very similar area of snow to the midwest and you see that for the most part in terms of where the european and the gfs model want to bring the heaviest snowfall they're right around the ballpark when it comes to the exact snowfall accumulation forecast at least the trajectory of the storm systems at least for relative to what we'd see for a forecast that's nine days out so that could mean that the certainty that this storm system takes a track very similar to this track with of course variations associated with it in the future that could mean that it's become that would be increasingly likely but we need to see that forecast maintain over the next nine days and there's still a lot of time um, between now and of course next week for the forecast to have major variations so i wouldn't lean on that scenario just yet but it's definitely very interesting that the forecast is very similar however the key difference like i said is that the gfs model expects the ridge to be a little bit further eastward and a little bit stronger and more elongated to a point where more of the heavy snowfall is slightly further northward to where more of the northern great lakes will get involved with snowfall rather than the rather than the more, um, more southern portions of the Great Lakes like Chicago, Indianapolis, Cleveland, which is definitely very interesting. But in this scenario, the G the Northeast still experience, uh, experiences snowfall. I'm, I wouldn't say it's as much snowfall and it isn't um, over as large of an area, but it still does experience snowfall in the GFS model scenario, which is definitely very interesting. We're gonna need to wait and see how this ridge will build to really determine the track and where exactly the heaviest snow will fall so i'll keep you guys updated over the next several days let me show you guys the positions of um, of the ridges based on what the two computer models are stating at this time take a look at the 500 millibar height anomaly so this is a 500 millibar height anomaly of the european model by the nine day 
point and we do see that the center of the ridge is located further eastward more centered more towards the mississippi river valley rather than the east coast and what that means is that that will bring more of a northerly push to the northeast for that cold air to enter the, the northeast cities for precipitation to be more likely to fall in the form of snowfall and you're probably wondering well the height anomalies show that it should be much warmer than average for much of the northern united states why does the european mall still expect heavy snowfall but the reason why is because despite the ridging being a little bit stronger we aren't seeing as strong of a solely push from this ridge because the suddenly winds are further towards the mid are further westward rather than eastward so many of these areas just north or just to the just to the east of this ridge would experience more of a snow event because you aren't experiencing the stronger and warmer suddenly winds that are just to the west of this ridge so you'd still so millions of americans and many of the big cities like chicago new york city philadelphia and boston in this scenario would experience an extreme snow event despite the ridge being quite strong but it's still weak enough for the soil pressure system to seep through and that cold air to seep through as well now let's compare this to what the gfs model is stating take a look at the gfs's models forecast at the same point we do see the ridge is well further eastward and what this means is that this brings more of a slowly flow to much of the eastern half of the united states which is the reason why the, the gfs model wants to bring the heavier snowfall further northward while the more southern areas of the midwest and even the northeast experience a little bit more rain in this scenario and a little bit less snowfall so the position of this ridge will be key in determining who will receive the heaviest snowfall i'll keep you guys updated over the next several days so this is the european model's snowfall forecast over the next nine days we do see that if this snowstorm were to come for fruition the exact way the european model expects as of right now we do see that much of northern midwest would experience over six inches of snow and we do see that chicago detroit milwaukee minneapolis and even the des moines experience six to 12 inches of snow in this snowstorm scenario and we even do see the accumulating snowfall move further eastward as well and while we don't see much snowfall in boston the only reason why is because the european model doesn't forecast beyond the 240 time frame but i wouldn't be surprised well i think it's pretty much guaranteed that if this scenario were to come for fruition and go be let's say for um this forecast goes beyond the 200 40 hour mark then boston would certainly experience 6 to 12 inches of snow and even new york city as well the only restraint is that the european model doesn't forecast beyond the 240 hour mark so this will be a significant snowstorm and definitely something i'll at least be aware of for much of the northern united states now let's take a look at the gfs model the GFS model shows a somewhat similar forecast, but does bring the heavier snowfall further northward because places like Detroit, Chicago, and Cleveland don't experience anywhere near as much snowfall. We do see heavy snowfall for the northeast from this first low pressure system, so that's only something we're going to need to keep in mind as well. But still a lot of time to iron out the forecast, and I'll keep you guys updated over the next several days. So this is my forecast when it comes to the potential of major snow. So if you're in the pink, you could certainly be in for the possibility of over six inches of snow. So you need to be aware at least of this next snowstorm scenario. Still a lot of time to iron out the forecast. Gonna need to determine where that ridge will build. But I'll keep you guys updated over the next several days. But uh, thank you guys for watching.